So as of last time, we created a hunter build based on the ability of shatter diving and receiving a ton of health, ability boost and regeneration in the process. It can be used whatever you like and customised to whatever setting you are in. However, it lacked the ability to be used in any sort of endgame content such as Grand Masters or Master Tier Raids because of the lack of protection being provided. Don't get me wrong, the build is still fantastic to use, it's just the lack of protection that can easily kill the mood if you mess up or get killed. So I went back to square one of the build and decided to focus my effort around shurikens and the quickest method of gaining our super back within 30 seconds. And this time round, it actually came out really well to be used in endgame and benefit everyone involved. Loads of elemental worlds and orbits of power will be spawning for you, and the way the build is designed around elemental shards and world opponency, the super usage will be going through the roof. Of course there are some downsides to it, but you guys are used to it by now. Now, think of this build as a version 2.0 of our last hunter build, but this time with even more benefits and strength that you can easily rely on. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then do leave a like and a sub for more content like this in the future, as I would really appreciate it. To start with the subclass, we will be using Revenant, because of course, this is the best subclass that offers the most customization for users in game. As we were building for my last build, a lot of what was used back then will be used here as well, except for a few changes here and there. Our aspects will be staying the same as they will greatly benefit the fast ability energy we can garner from using both in hand. The Shatter Dive will help us shatter glaciers and combatants with ease alongside our glacial grenades, and Grim Harvest Aspect will provide us with status shards that will regen our melee energy and work alongside the Elemental Shards mod. We can of course change our Shatter Dive to Touch of Winter instead for an extra status crystal via our current grenade use, but this will solely be down to you if you're happy to opt into using a Shatter Weapon instead of an ability, since we now don't have that option available if we do opt into that. Nonetheless, the offering provided do allow users to experiment more and see where things head to, whether they like it or not. When it comes to fragments, hunters have a low amount of slots available to maximise the fragments offered, so this may result in some experimentation just to get it right. As glaciers will be used as they offer the most amount of shards upon destruction, fragments here can be mixed and matched for some interesting combos. I went with the basic of Whispers of Fissures for increased shatter damage, but then chose Whisper of Hunger for increased mini energy from status shards, and whispers of bonds where defeated frozen combatants yield you more super energy. The idea here was to create as much status shards around to keep my melee fully topped up, and then use my melee to proc whispers of bonds for super energy. However, this further leads to our elemental mods we have attached that will be providing extra hands on support as we go. The hands on mod will give us extra super energy via melee kills, and melee wellmaker will spawn more elemental wells as we go. Firma Classic Blooming will provide us with orbs of power via mini kills, and Well Potency will give us extra stupid energy from elemental worlds collected. Now, chuck in Star Eater Scales, and I'm sure you can already see what is generally happening. In simple terms, you'll be relying less on your guns and more for your hands, which will be rated E for everyone. Now, let's take a look at the weapons, as they will play a major big part in how the build will play. Instead of us using the Roll Pakula Hand Cannon with Headstone like last time, this time we'll be using the Monte Carlo instead for his exotic trait, Monte Carlo Method. This perk will provide the user a melee cooldown upon damaging the combatant and has a chance to fully charge your melee ability from a kill. Alongside this, this also has the Marco Chain perk that will increase the weapon's damage via melee kills. Both of these perks combined with our melee focus build will allow you to consistently get your melee up at all times and tie back into our well mods at the same time. Of course, this season also has the AR anti-barrier mod as well, so we can bring this into any activity that has an anti-barrier combatant around and does have a pretty reliable build for endgame activities. The secondary wise, we have the Timelines Vertex Fusion Rifle with Shield Disorient and Demolitionist. The idea here is to use the demo perk to support my grenades and other abilities for my grenade ability as we go on, and to then use the Shield Disorient perk to confuse combatants with the same elemental type as the weapon, so very handy against Hive Witches for example. I don't believe any Pacific Fusion will need to be used here as the Cartesian coordinates is also a great option to opt into. However, please note that the following build does not have the Particle Deconstruction mod as we're using that space for two other mods instead that play a vital role within the build. Because of this choosing, which weapon is best for your secondary is down to personal use and how often you tend to use it. I would recommend you stick with a melee theme and get a weapon that has the Swashbuckler perk available, or Harmony perk as they will both benefit you whether you use them or not. 
Lastly, for a heavy, we have the Weed Regret Adept Linear Fusion that managed to nab in Trials, and this role has Triple Tap and Headstone, which are both very powerful combos to have. Triple Tap on any weapon will return one down to your magazine, and is very useful against targets with easily hit crit spots, or bosses in general. Headstones now will create a status crystal upon a position kill made, which we can go ahead and shatter to create status shards, which of course will be linked back into the rest of the builds and so forth. I don't plan on using my heavy against minor combatants unless I have plenty of ammo to spare, but I do plan to use this against champions alongside the unstoppable mods to make short work of them. If you don't have this fusion, then don't fret, as you can farm for the threaded needle via battlegrounds, or use the recast of the game one that way instead. For stats, although strength should be our biggest focus in the entirety of the build, we don't need to heavily spec into this area if you have everything that I have shown. Instead of wasting points, we can focus on adding onto some strengths that our abilities will be heavily used in. From across what we have, we have a very balanced set of 50 to 60 stats to show off, which should be the sweet spot that everyone should aim for. Both strength and discipline can stay around 50, as we have the Elemental World Mod's secondary effect, status fragments, and the Absolution mods, which will provide us with extra ability energy for the two. Intellect now can stay at 50 as well, however, as mentioned near the beginning of the video, we have a ton of mods that will be affecting how often this area will be procking for the user. Hands on mod will give us extra super energy via mini kills, and Mini Well Maker will spawn more Elemental Worlds as we go. Firmaclastic Blooming will provide us with orbs of power via mini kills, and Wild Potency will give us extra super energy from Elemental Worlds collected. Elemental Shards will turn status shards into Elemental Worlds, which will then affect the Wild Potency mod at the same time. The Fond of Wisdom will give us a plus 50 to intellect over a period of 30 seconds, so practically a 3 minutes 48 second cooldown. Elemental Light will provide us a wall upon activating a super, and then lastly Star Eater Scales will provide an additional amount of super energy when picking up orbs of power. This is the biggest and single focus point of the build that you're going to need to heavily invest in through the mod section alone. As long as we can keep our melee afloat and have our grenades available when we need it most, the rest of the build will fall in place just as planned. Now with the main bases covered, let's take a look at the mods we're using and how they play within the build. For head we have discipline, hands on times 2 and melee while maker mod. Arm we have thermoclaster blooming, unstoppable fusion rifle and elemental shards mod. In chest we have Strength, Kakasu Stamina Times 2, and Fonda Wisdom mod. Leg we have Maya Strength, Absolution, Fusion Scavenger, and Elemental Light mod. And Cloak we have Maya Intellect, Thermoclastic Strike, and Well of Potency mod. Just like the Shadow Dive build we did a while ago, this elegant build can offer users a quick setup for building up super energy and spamming your super one after another. A lot more safer than what we did last time as it doesn't involve the use of getting close to combatants to finish them, and at the same time we get double melee to use which we can one shot most minor combatants and still have an extra one spare, which is very handy as the number of wells and orbs you'll be used will become a lot over time. Such a simple build with a heap of benefits for a small reaction is particularly useful for those that don't have the new Agar Scepter exotic as that combined with the build can offer the near same benefits except that the following exotic will greatly benefit from having our super freely available in a short time frame. Content such as Gambit, Strikes, Nightfalls and even Raids will benefit from the build as your super is fantastic at add clearing and control, and your teammates who could also be using status can benefit from it as well. In fact, when using something like Grandmasters, I can see the build being very favourable as a support build, for not only just you, but also your team with the amount of frozen combatants spared, and orbs of power plus elemental worlds that will be laying around. Now you may be thinking why I chose to use Star Eater Scales for exotics to use, considering Frosties are better for ability energy gain. Which you're right, but I find that Star Eater provides the user with a ton of benefits from simply adding your super, and that alone is great when you plan to use it all the time. Not only can we get our super overcharged, but we can also get a burst of healing, bonus damage to our super, and an overshield at full stacks. All of this, like I said, can be very useful in tight and enclosed environments with a mix of medium to hard combatants. Frosties are great of course, and I do advise you to play with them as well, but Star Eaters definitely takes the cake for the build. I personally believe if you're a player who enjoys the idea of controlling your environment through just melee and super alone, and for a heap of rewards, then this build will surely pique your interest. In fact, you can even use this in PvP with great success. But do remember, elemental worlds don't work in that activity, so you will be quite limited. There is also a cooldown in terms of how many times you can activate the elemental shards mod, but don't fret, as that won't hamper the build too much. 
Everything in this build will lead to one or two areas and that is as simple as it gets for a super build. Just like Shatter Dive, as long as you keep using the specific ability as presented, you'll never run out of ways to get your super up and running, and that is something I 100% can count on. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.